Hey, what's going on everybody? Robert Marzullo here from Ram Studio Comics and today's video subject topic is going to be on one point perspective. Uh, I'm going to do a series of these videos and I'm going to cover one, two, and three point perspective. Uh, I've been getting requests for this so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, with any perspective drawing the first thing that you'll want to define is your horizon line. So we'll just label that HZ for horizon line. Or, I'm sorry, HZ. That's a horizon, HL, horizon line. Goodness, we're off to a blazingly great start. Okay, so, and then the next thing you want to define is your vanishing point. Now, keep in mind the vanishing point is where you are, you're focused on, um, where everything will re uh, recess into space and converge. So that's your vanishing point. Now, if the horizon line is higher or lower, that's what's going to de depend upon whether or not you're looking up at an object or down at an object. If you uh, have the horizon line higher, then you are going to be looking down at an object. If the horizon line is lower, I'll show you, um, like so, you're going to be looking up at an object. So just keep that in mind. For our starting uh, method or whatever, we're just going to do like, you know, you're looking down a street and it's right you know, it's right in the middle of your perspective. And I'll show you how we're going to work with that. So what you're going to want to do is drop your uh, your one anchor point of your ruler um, onto that vanishing point and then you will, you will bend that ruler or turn that ruler to create the depth and perspective that you want. We'll say like this and we'll start with that and then you're going to want to draw vertical lines to define, you know, the the shape that way. Um, so that's our that's our beginning point. And then horizontal lines to show it, you know, uh, going back into space to your uh, your plane of vision or whatever. So it's there's no change in uh, depth there because you're you're face level with that side of the object. Um, that's where other perspective uh, 2.3 point, point will come in if you're trying to also distort uh, the side of the object or look like you're on more of an angle to the object from their perspective. So we'll get a couple rough lines in here and I'll just usually kind of chisel out uh, the shape, the building, and get it where I want. You know, like I felt this was too uh, much depth for the, uh, the building that I wanted. Uh, so I just bring that line in a little bit more, probably even do it a little bit closer like that. And these are rough construction lines. So you always want to do that. You always want to keep that portion of it uh, loose and kind of fluid and, you know, get down the uh, shapes you're looking for because you can always come back and erase your construction lines. And, uh, you know, more is better than less, I think, when you're in this stage of the, uh, the drawing. So what I just kind of do here is keep, you know, adding a little bit of depth to the lines, kind of get a feel for what I think this building may or may not look like. Um, you know, I want to add lots of segments um, to get an idea for where my detail is going to go. Now, another thing to keep in mind when doing this, I don't want to get too advanced in this uh, beginning type video, but another good thing to remember when doing this is that the, the ways to actually measure uh, your your segments or where you're placing your your information and one really quick and easy way to do it is just like this like this box in perspective I'll come off the perspective line now I'll place one anchor on the corner of my structure there the other on the opposite opposing corner of the structure there I'll create a line and then I'll do the same thing for the opposite corners like so and then I'll create a line. Now what that's done for me is allowed me to find the exact center of this box shape in perspective. That's very important because if you you know want to know that your geometry is correct um, you'll need to find that center. You can now segment in perspective across the middle. Um, you can repeat that process for the remaining two sections and keep uh, subdividing the object to get your absolute centers uh, and know say where your windows are going to go or your trim or whatever. Um, a lot of people eyeball it. I, I do it from time to time uh, when I don't feel like taking the extra time to do what I just explained there. 
but if you want your buildings and your structures to look uh, extremely correct in perspective that's a nice little uh, tool to use so I just figured I'd show you that now another one is this say I want to uh, do these segments coming across like this whether they be bricks windows whatever uh, another good way to do that without just doing it visually and hoping for the best is to measure um, along here with accurate measurements and that'll give me my you know like I said whether they be bricks windows segments in the uh, glass building whatever um, but a way that I like to do that it's kind of a workaround uh, where I don't actually measure I don't use any of the rulers from the uh, uh, the software I just create another layer I give my starting two points like this and I actually figured this out uh, doing this on paper one day because I got so sick of moving uh, rulers around for all these buildings I was drawing um, I will now duplicate that layer and make sure I did do that on a separate layer yeah. okay duplicate that layer or if you're using paper you would just slide the piece of paper down and use the first two um, uh, marks as your reference so, like I said you're not actually measuring anything but it will give you an accurate uh, measurement when you're done so then I just take that down like that um, either merge them back together or just keep duplicating it I merge them together and then duplicate again and within a couple uh, times of doing this you'll have the the measurements that you need relatively fast and I should just save this because this is a good little tool to just have already saved in the computer kind of like clip art but just grab it for uh, a quick ruler so let's see duplicate again oh forgot to merge but I'll just merge those together now okay so now with that little measurement tool I can place that along the side of the uh, structure here and using my perspective uh, ruler um, I just kind of place it on my vanishing point there and then bring the other end to where it converges through those uh, hashtags marks whatever um, so now that when I draw I have a reference and it's all gonna measure the same now it's a visual measurement but it's still correct it's not um, just eyeballing it you know and after a while you'll probably just say yeah to heck with that I can I can usually eyeball it pretty good and get what I, I, I like what I'm looking for so you won't need that but within that amount of speed you've got now your segments to you know add your detail into this building um, now the other thing to keep in mind with um, oh and then you just come over here and you, you do these horizontally like that so that they wrap around the building but uh, another thing to keep in mind when trying to do convincing uh, buildings is lots and lots of uh, trim and detail work uh, to me that's you know and then obviously the way you shade it but to me that's the way that you get some nice looking structures um, so now keep in mind these are all just my construction lines um, and just to move a little bit faster I'm probably just gonna throw some quick line work in here um, I showed you how you could measure it but I'm actually not gonna do that for speed sake excuse me I just want to be able to show you how to add some detail work to make your building you know look cool and and you know relatively fast or whatever so a big part of making these buildings look right is to add lots of uh, trim and detail work so let's say on the corner uh, corners of the building here we give it like some uh, some different type of brick work so I'm just kind of drawing these lines now in this particular software I'm not gonna get uh, software detailed but in this particular software just by holding shift I can get either a vertical or horizontal line that really helps for um, uh, for drawing your buildings uh, quickly and then I love the fact that the ruler I can just place that perspectively on a point and that will stay there and I can now just move this other one around interactively so it's an interactive ruler which is a lot like what you're going to use on your art table so it's very streamlined to uh, to that okay so now um, I'm going to go ahead and convert this 
down in transparency or convert it to another color. Let me see. Yeah, maybe I'll just tone it down. Hopefully you can still see that. All right, add another layer over top. And now I'll, now that I've got some of my line work in perspective and I kind of have some uh, basis to, to you know, work with, I can go in here and try to think more in terms of the, the detail work. So again, like I said, I want to make sure that I add these uh, corner caps onto the building. They always look kind of cool. They're easy to do. So you just basically draw these where they look like they, they're they raised away from the building. And the way you do that is to add some shadowing right there where I am so it gives it spacing. Um, like so. So I'll draw those in first. And those are my, you know, whatever you want to call them, like corner caps. And then you just kind of come in here and maybe add some uh, lines where the brickwork would be. And again, I'm doing this visually so it's not going to be perfect. But if I wanted it to be perfect, I would use that measurement that I just showed you on a separate layer. So easily enough to do, um, I can throw that in. And then for the other lines, I have to do that in perspective. So I get the perspective ruler, place the one point on the vanishing point, and then systematically move it to the lines that I just drew. Now keep in mind, you can hit both this line here and this line here at the same time. So you just kind of mosey on through, kind of zone out, listen to your music, this part's boring, and just kind of get all these lines in there real fast. And I generally will take the brush size down a hair for the ones down at the end here. Reason being, if these lines are identical in thickness and weight, well then we're not truly drawing in correct perspective again. So if you want to make it look more visually appealing, uh, it takes a little bit longer, but you would just con condense the brush size down there. I'm basically trying not to draw as hard. I could all, and that's a, another way too. I could just draw a little bit with more pressure up here and light pressure there. Get kind of that same effect without changing the uh, brush size. So you just kind of go in there, and this is all the detail work. But this is what you know starts making it look cool after a while. You took the time to add these little details. Now the other thing, um, I miss one right there. Oh, I just drew it too far apart. It's fine though. Like I said, I just did this part visually, so it's not perfect. Okay, so now up here, this is going to be a ledge, so you want to make sure that you have a nice heavy shadow in here to really, you know, bring that away from the structure more. Uh, even your line weight should kind of be thicker at this point where it's closer to the viewer and then thin away a little bit. Uh, another good thing is another piece of trim say maybe inside this uh, these corner caps before you get down to your windows and stuff like that. Uh, it just looks more believable. I mean a lot of people even add a couple of those just because it adds more more architecture to the uh, to the you know more design to the building basically. Um, okay, now the fun part, which is the windows, uh, or you know what, I'll actually separate this one more time right here. I'll do another trim piece, uh, so this building's not too boring. So again, I'll do the segmented piece, I'll do a drop shadow below it so it shows depth, um, maybe even some line work through here. Keep in mind that by the time it gets over to here, the line should be spaced further apart. Uh, and again, to get that in correct perspective, you would use the, the X effect finding center and subdividing the structure to really get those in proportion. To, to not worry too much about that, you can generally do that visually. That's what I do and it, it, looks, it looks fine. You gotta really be out of, uh, out of whack there for it to look bad. And it, actually these bricks over here could have been spaced wider um, or been wider than down here and it would have shown more perspective there. Okay, so now as far as the windows, oops, you know, I'm just using those guides that are already set up. I'll draw on my windows, maybe the little cross member to the window, uh, the frame around the window. 
sometimes there's a ledge below the window uh, sometimes there's decorative kind of stuff around the window like that um, just depends on how much detail you want to add and how far into this you want to get usually there's going to be a greater shadow on this side because you're seeing the uh, side of the trim more and then you have to figure out your spacing say here and here and draw in the other windows using those same guides like that. Now the other thing is on this side of the window you're gonna see the inside of the window so there's probably gonna be a little bit of shadow there. The other thing is to make these look more correct that that's a pretty poorly drawn window there. Um, I actually need to bump up the resolution on this uh, uh, this canvas to show you a little better. But now what you're gonna to wanna to do there in perspective this window would appear to do this. Okay, well there's going to be a shadow here and here. And really the segment to the window to make it look more correct wouldn't be in the middle here. It would actually be offset because this is recessed. So you have to compensate for that recess and it's going to appear to be closer to this side of the uh, the frame. So just keep that in mind if you want to make it look more correct. And then now for the trim again. I would generally use a thinner line, especially starting off, so I can get the detail of it in place. Then I'm going to show the shadow to the back of the trim in this window, and that's what's going to start making this form uh, pop out a little bit more. And keep in mind, since this is just a one-point perspective, if the lines aren't converging to that perspective, then they're just either horizontal or vertical. There's not another direction. So you have your vanishing point, horizontal, vertical, that's it. So it's pretty simple when you're working with something like this. And keep in mind too, when you want to do ovals, uh, don't be scared of the ovals. Like, you know, I just freehand drew that little oval decorative piece over top. Uh, but don't be scared of them because if you want to do uh, an oval in perspective, half oval, tire, whatever, it's right here. See this little square right here on the side of the building? If I wanted a perfect circle there, I start with that. I create my subdivisions like I showed you how to do, which we find your corners like that. And then you draw your circle in there. Now that circle is in perspective. Same thing with the half moon right there. So you do away with this part, there's your half moon in perspective. So I just figured I'd show you that real quick. It's, it's actually extremely easy to do. Of course, I don't want to circle right there on the side of the building. I just wanted to show you that. So, so yeah, this is all detail work. You just kind of step and repeat the process. You can sometimes get away with duplicating the window and uh, oh, you know what? I did that out of order. Let me get that out of there. Um, duplicating the window and trying to sh uh, shift it in perspective. I never have good results with that. I don't even know if that's that's probably the way you, you should, probably shouldn't even try to do that, but. I've tried that at times and haven't really gotten good results. I just find it easier to do this because really <clears throat> the way it works is the first couple uh, designs that you lay out on this building will be the toughest, but then it gets a lot easier and I'll show you why here in a second. So you just kind of zone out, get your details going, throw your shadows in there, there's a cross section. You know, and I can I, I can use this first window, or the second's probably the best one. This first one's pretty mucky. Uh, use the second one for my reference, and I could grab all those perspective lines from there using this vanishing point, and get the rest of it into uh, per, you know perfect perspective if I need to. And then what I'll generally do is I'll use these these guides that I got, maybe subdivide those and then subdivide them again and there's my bricks. And I generally won't draw every brick to a building. I'll fill in some of that detail here, some of it over here, and I kind of spot it in. I don't feel that, you know, I look at it like this, like your eyes not going to focus and see every brick anyways, so why would you draw every brick? You should basically kind of texturize your drawing and add them in here and there, uh, some more defined than others. And to me, that looks cooler for an illustration than drawing every single brick. I think it looks monotonous and 
they're not quite frankly unrealistic or boring. And then a good way to shade these is just kind of straight lines here and there, just to kind of, again, texturize the the shapes and add some good shadows in there. Uh, let, you know, unless it's a, a nighttime scene, then you want to black in, you know, black in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, thick blacks in there to to really make it pop. Okay, so there's that. Now, what I was saying about it getting easier is this right here. Now that you've got those windows in place, it becomes very easy to expound upon your drawing here because you can take these as reference to every aspect of it. If you want this line for your next set of windows, well then, oh, I need a straight line there. Then you just do that and you've got the reference line. You could draw this in blue line or a lighter gray, whatever works for, well for you where you can see properly. So all these little lines that you need for reference come from uh, these windows up here and then the other portions of it come from your perspective line and your perspective ruler being placed back on the vanishing point and then back over to here and you got your line going across here. And you just take the measurement from the first window, place it here and there's your next, you know, series of lines. So basically it comes together real quick from these other ones because you have that reference point. And you just keep building upon it. So hopefully that explains enough of that portion where you could create this type of building on your own now. So we've got the bricks, the windows, the trim pieces, which remember trim you can just go crazy with. You know, if there's no right or wrong way to add uh, trim to your buildings, um, I would say lean on the side of more is better than less because a lot of people tend to, uh, I know myself, I, I still have a problem with, you know, wanting to speed through backgrounds and adding less detail. But if you want your, your backgrounds to look really cool, then you'll want to get past that, you know, stumbling block and just, you know, jump in there and add as much, you know, add a lot of cool details. That's where it really makes those scenes pop. Like just by taking this and adding, oh, am I grabbing? Oh, that's why I'm grabbing the wrong part of this roller. Goodness. Okay, right there. Put the one on the finishing point and then move this side around. Yeah, and just by adding even this extra little piece on top of this building, this building would look pretty boring with just this one structure. By adding this structure, I can give it just a little bit more to look at. Um, uh, maybe different types of windows up here, something. I don't know about that, but you know, just I would still add something up here. Just something, maybe that's too shallow of a, of a segment. Let me try that. And again, you could go back to your initial sketch layer, kind of rough this in at first just to get an idea for what's going to look good before you're sitting there wasting time with the rulers and all that. Because you can generally rough something in. It doesn't have to be perfectly in perspective to get the idea down. Yeah, maybe the windows disappear behind the trim like that. Sometimes that looks pretty cool. It shows that you're looking up at the structure more too. When you have like a trim piece like this, the windows kind of, you know, are halfway hidden behind there. And you know, little details like, you know, throw an antenna or something up here. A smoke stat. There's smoke coming out. Oops, smoke. Yeah that is some really convincing smoke, huh? But you get the idea. That's still in the thumbnail, thumbnail process. So hopefully that helps you. Um, the only other thing I can think of to kind of show you with one point perspective is that how if you do the same thing and you bring it, say, down here, 
you're more at the street view now because you're below the uh, horizon line so you're looking down on the object that maybe by you know use your horizontal lines and remember again the main thing with the one point perspective is if it's not horizontal or vertical it's converge converging at the vanishing point and then you would just kind of box in this shape like this and you know there's the beginning of a car and you just kind of start feeling that out I keep them real boxy at first and then get in there and start rounding corners and you know the windshield always kind of rounds to the front like that and again for that circle uh, for the tires use that effect I told you about creating the square first Find your center if you have to, but really you just do it with the square and then draw your tires inside of that square in perspective. And this is going to be real quick because uh, I'm just trying to, uh, that front of that vehicle is way too big. So you chop that down, bring that bumper back. Uh, if this is a car, chances are you're not. I, was, I think I was kind of thinking either this could be either a car or a truck, like a, a truck, but we'll go with a car. So the back end of this from this perspective is going to be very slight, if even visible. So you'll see a longer front end. It's kind of looking a bit like a, like a jag almost. Like a longer front end, you'll barely see the back end. Then round this, you know, obviously this windshield's pretty ugly. You know. But you just keep building upon that. And getting the you know getting everything into place and do a couple layers and even this little goofy sketch here could turn into a pretty realistic looking car um, or convincing car once I'm done with it especially from this uh, this uh, angle and the amount of detail you don't want to over detail it you got to pick and choose your battles when drawing this type of stuff too that's another uh, thing to remember that when you got all these buildings and all this stuff going on you really just want a, a lot of detail in the four, uh, foreground buildings um, and then work that detail uh, away as it recesses into space and becomes closer to the vanishing point. Uh, for one, you, you really can't fit as much detail in there and it gets lost and, and you want to think in terms of the way that you perceive things, you know, if you look at an image of a city uh, as those buildings recess back and they get closer to the horizon line, you don't see as much of that detail. So you want to draw in that same respect. You want to keep that consistent with your drawings and and plus with deadlines with comics, you'll see it's really tough to meet deadlines if you were trying to draw every brick into a building back here. You know, good luck on that. Just doesn't make sense. So. All right, well, anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. This is uh, my video on, you know, vanishing point and one-point perspective. Um, I'm going to go ahead and handle two-point and three-point perspective in the future, so be sure to check back for that. Be sure to like and subscribe so I can keep bringing you these videos, but also let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, so I can better myself, better these videos, and bring you a better channel on drawing and the topic of drawing. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, Talk to you soon, and take care and keep drawing. Bye-bye.